build. He is an immaculate duelist. And if you are looking at 100 Thieves and you think someday is this biggest threat, the brightest star on the team, Nocturne's ultimate, you can turn off the lights before you... Get too crap. That always feels bad when your opponent manages to get the better <laughs> of your camps and also grab both scuttle crabs, so he gets away from that one. But oh. Licorice going for the solo kill here in the top lane. Oh. And there you go. We're talking about wind conditions, man. And wind honey fruit oh. being found in the river means he healed back up. And now bottom side, we're going in yet again. Cody Sun forced to flash away. Stunt now the target as Vulcan starts things off. And Sven is there following up with the damage. Labber already level six. We're going to make the tower dive come alive. The damage goes through. The health bars shrink down rapidly. Labber having to flash away. Sven looking to get the kills. It's one down. But here comes the artillery. Both bottom laners on the side of 100 Thieves are killed off. Dragon it's Auto because it counts as a spell to give you more attack speed. They do it. They finish off the dragon. But now the fight is started. Remember, Stunt still no level six. He's not able to find that Cosmic Radiance. He cannot bring in the invulnerability in Cloud9. Now mounting the assault against 100 Thieves. Niski destroys Cody's son. He sends Meteos to join him. And that game be more of a carry as Niski goes for the damage. He finds the Paddle Star. He finds the Trouble Bubble. <laughs> Niski gives him a big old belch from the mountain and sends him right yeah. there. Know that <laughs> how will it become anything is dead. <laughs> in the afterlife, you're reborn. Do you believe in uh, in that? You, you want to get into reincarnation about Shelly's? Hold on, Blabber's not going to let <gasps> Ioma get reincarnated into anything other than... Honestly, well, that is going to be their best shot at getting kills. Niski here's got some juice. Niski trying to see if he's got the damage on Demetrios, but he's not quite able to get it there with the jump forward. Vulcan with the stopwatch, keeping himself alive. The Gangplank ulti will prevent his escape, and Cody's son is on the board. Much needed. Ahead. Well, never mind. We'll see what happens to Ryoma as he's doomed. You're right. Here is what you want to do if you're Cloud9 trying to push this game ahead. You pop the enemy mid laner right near his red buff. Now you look to get away. A nice stopwatch coming through from Blabber there, allowing him to dodge away from the Meteo Salty. Now he's barely going to be kept alive in the back end of the fight. Here comes the cavalry. Licorice has arrived. The ult comes through and Meteos is over the wall, but now he's going to be chased down and Blabber's right back into the mix, grabbing himself yet another kill. The damage from this one. We'll see if 100 Thieves are in any sort of a position to try and contest. They have no jungler, but there was no smite on Blabber either. More money for Cloud9. Yeah, they were thinking about going for Blabber in mid lane, but it gets turned around on Meteos. When your tank is the man who can be jumped on in the jungle and 100 to 0 in the duration of the Nocturne Fear Tether, Things are not going very well here for the team of 100 Thieves. Licorice, he throws out the ult, but upon the stopwatch coming down, he throws it over the wall instead to reacquire different targets. Gangplank ulti comes down over the wall just to make sure this fight isn't going to be going any further. Stunt and Cody Sun finding some damage onto Licorice, but each Callista auto attack does barely anything at all. The Orn is so incredibly right tanky. Right here, and Licorice will just walk up. He says, get away from my Drake, and he's going to jump in and fight 1v3. Blabber looking to show up now, following in on Licorice's lead. He's able to steal away the Infernal Drake. He beats Meteos there in the smite fight. Still Licorice on the front line. He's going to be taken very, very low. He still keeps himself alive, and Cody is the first one to fall. Back in the fight, Niski's looking to take down Meteos as the rest of C9 will follow up on the stragglers of 100 Thieves. It is a one for four. And Cloud9, they lose their jungler for the fans wanted to see from this team when they moved into playoffs. Absolutely merciless, absolutely unstoppable. And someday, once again, going to nearly be taken down here. Niski coming in from behind. He's got a little bit more damage to go if he wants to grab the kill. Vulcan's got the root. There's your sleepy trouble. Bubble doesn't even have to get the sleep at the end. The damage is like allow things to drag out for too long. Blabber going into the top side now, looking for the 1v1 against Someday on the GP. Ulti is called down. Hey, that's not a fair 1v1, but fair doesn't really matter when you get the kill, does it? Blabber's still <laughs> just hanging around. I don't know how many people from 100 Thieves are trying to hunt him down here. Meteos, he whips the whip. Blabber with a flash. Blabber with the block onto the CC, coming out from the spell shield there. And now Meteos is overextended. The rest of Cloud9 is just in the enemy base. They're like, all right, Ryoma's the only guy here stopping us. Why would we care? Still pushing strong as three. Licorice tanking up the turret. All of 100 Thieves just stayed in the top side for way too long. They seem to just be go-nexting this one. And Cloud9 are happy to oblige. They're on to the Nexus itself. Someday will do nothing but pad their stats, it appears, as this team is way too tanky with way too much damage, and Cloud9 is way too damn good at League of Legends. They will wrap this one up in 28 minutes.
Oh. It's been 400 Thieves, where when you draft the Callista Tarek, you're hoping you can get an early lead on that Callista so you can start kind of face tanking later team fights. And they just never let any of that come online. And it was really just a masterful game from C9 from start to finish. Yeah. Yeah, Mark, let's talk about that bot lane. Orange type champion. <laughs> that is true, but hey, I said I wanted to see something more exciting than Tom Kinch in the bottom lane, and they brought me Bard, man. I'm the stash. I am appeased. This is fantastic. Start to win the trade. So during that, they do get the mark for Blabber. Someday's pissed about it though. <laughs> yeah, someday's not happy here. And he is just trying to run Blabber down in the jungle. Q3 on to the remaining Krugs there in the camp to get a little bit of something, something from that. As Licorice flashes up the wall, slams his head right into the bricks on the edge of the red buff. And that is first blood over to C9. Already down one and a half thousand gold despite only having one kill on the board. And that means a lot of leads in plates and in farm and in Cody and Stunts world. Things go from bad to worse. It is two kills for Nada. Zilch, zero, nothing. And Cloud9 just continues building this lead. Cloud9 yep. will continue finding their finding their opportunities to punish their opponents here in the top side. Or is it gonna be Zven who's caught out? He's almost taken Cody. down, but Cody instead, the one under pressure. Vulcan managing to find the stasis there with the ulti flashing forward. Niski's able to grab the damage, and now we'll see if C9 can get themselves away. Cody won't find anything with the Akathian surprise as Niski keeps himself safe from the follow-up damage. Ryoma tries to get one in return. The CC comes through, but it's not going to grab a lot. Vulcan may be overextended now. Drake is going to be taken by Blabber there on the other end of the map, but Meteos is able to finally grab a kill here for 100 Thieves on the top side. Niski looking to chase even further. Good God. Flash Two for one at deal. The very end of the paddle star. Buy one, get one free. Triple kill for Niski. Throw another one in the shopping cart just because he likes the way. See this. You know how it turns out as Niski. Oh. Uh, he actually likes the deals that he's seeing on Summoner's Rift today. <laughs> Cody's son just lost. Everything must go. Free, 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 <laughs> free. Free, free, free. Get your wacky waving inflatable arm flailing two man oh. out because Niski is not stopping bargains like these anytime soon, my friend. He is just throw another one in the cart. The entirety of hundred. You know what this is? Did you ever watch those shows on like Nickelodeon when you were younger, where a kids would enter into a sweet on the Zoe? By the way, stopwatch in inventory. So this is probably a combination of death sentence for Medios. Yeah, I don't know if he gets away from this one. He is. Starting to walk out there, Subjugate keeping him alive, but it appears only for a moment oh. longer. Or is the Blast Cone going to mean an escape? No, it will not. He can't get in there in time. Niski looking to find the setup here yet again with a trouble bubble. Go for hey, it. He in the right. Let's see if Cloud9 gets punished here. 100 Thieves, they're collapsing. This may be their only opportunity to make a move. Vulcan buys a little bit of time there, keeping Stunt and Cody's son wrapped up in the ulti. Niski not going to find his mark there with the trouble bubble. Ryoma and 100 Thieves walk away. And nobody goes down. Going into playoffs based on statistics and logic, you're hard trolling. And Licorice is now going to be dove here. 3v1. They will take him down. Cody's son on the board got himself a kill now. Ahead, but... And we can go back to talking about, you know, where, where's the area of attack going to be for 100 Thieves in this series? Because, like you're saying, everyone kind of expects Cloud9 to be this dominant. The opportunity to continue the auto attacks. Tempered Fate comes out. Cody's son going to be caught up in that one. Redemption coming down now here as well. And the turret is gone. Remaining inhibitor is the next target. And there comes your Ophelio Salty. There comes the follow-up CC plus the damage. Blabber on the front line having to drop down the Lamb's Respite. He'll stay alive through that one. And 100 Thieves are going to be baited into taking the fight. It's a one-for-one one so far. That's the best the Thieves have gotten so far in this game. But they're all so low, they have to go back to the fountain and try to recover. In the meantime, the Nexus turrets are being deleted. The first is down. The second is down. And Meteos and Cody's son are taking a hell of a lot of damage. 100 Thieves will be mopped up here at the very end just to pad the Cloud9 stats a little bit harder. A double kill for Licorice. 
and a second win in this series for Cloud9, even more convincing than the first. This year, there oh, is only no. one person in the upper echelon this year, and it's Cloud9. I mean, they're looking oh, to shorten the game time with every single game. I, for one, don't mind it, because showing that you can stomp somebody is a very good display of strength. This Not yet. comp from 100 Thieves looks much more adept at making picks, using Tom Kench to bring himself and somebody else around the map, using LeBlanc to show up for that instant burst of massive damage in terms of their actual engage in a 5v5 they appear a little bit limited and uh nice. don't walk into that oh. bush well here comes your stun here comes your follow-up there goes your drowsy and the damage babu first blood c9 dude they can't even let him have one minute doomed oh. pantheon moving around he's got all five stacks ready to go there on the passive drowsy connects Remember, Jarvan is not able to get over the wall. He does not have the E and the Q. Licorice taken very low. Licorice exploded and things go well here for 100 Thieves. Cloud9 overestimate what they can do. Right now, though, he's headed into two players. And he is jumped on as Stunt and Meteos find the initial damage. And Cody Stunt shows up just in time to have the money put right where Control Hunter. of the zone. Meteos stepping forward, looking to make the play on Niski. Flash away from the Cloud9 mid laner, who's going to try to be kiting this one out. TP coming in now to force C9 to back away. And once again, it's Blabber who's in a tough spot. It's Someday coming to collect, and it's Meteos who grabs the kill. Meteos trying to attack Blabber and his Just stats. barely. Blabber looking to get himself out now as the Tom Kench brings in the cavalry. And 100 Thieves will once again try to make a move. Flash out from Blabber there to resist the dive coming through from Meteos and the Cataclysm. 100 Thieves will take that summoner spell as the true shot barrage strikes Vulcan at the very back into the fight and picks up the second kill of the game here for Cloud. In inventory against that completed item on Sunday, it's not really a, a comparison you would want to make here in a 1v1, but Licorice is already actually winning it. The Ignite does so much to help them out there, and Blabber shows up to lend a help. tough road ahead of them because, like we talked about in Champ Select, they don't have really good hard engage versus C9 team, and Cloud9 make a pick attempt. Sven trying to get the True Shot Barrage on to stunt there, not quite able to get it. The TP was going to come down to the bottom lane, but it's interrupted, and that just means it is free money for the Cloud9 roster. Sven kept alive, and a double kill over to Blabber. You try to shut him down. Blabber as well will provide that extra lethality to make it so he can find the damage he needs onto these backline carries of 100 Thieves. Licorice and Someday once again here in the 1v1. Licorice doing well to avoid the Qs early on. Blabber's made his way up, but so has Meteos. Considering Licorice is taken very low, Blabber tries to flash in to save his teammate in time, but he won't be able to do it. And that just means he's stuck in the dunk bucket. It's a two for zero, and 100 Thieves win the fight. Meteos doesn't have a global, but he's there for uh, someday. Now he's going to have to get out of there because he's toast. Nah, take a nap, buddy. That Blabber has arrived, and Meteos is working his way in from the enemy base. Now that Cloud9 has smite secure potential, they're going to be looking to take this one down before Meteos is able to make his way into the fight, and Blabber's got it. That's going to be Drake secured. Disky with the Blink, the Ruin King active, has the ability to provide the CC, and Licorice is going to be charging in, but Blabber's already been taken down. Licorice grabbing the kill on the stunt, still looking to maybe make some more happen. Meteos jumps Jumping in with the EQ combo, someday over the wall, providing some Qs, providing some CC, providing some suppressing fire, but it's Licorice with the onslaught of shadows, summoning the cavalry to dive into the lines of 100 Thieves. Cloud9 now disengaging, 100 Thieves will do the same. Meteo's so close to dead, but close doesn't count here. Niski completely unafraid in this game, as the true shot barrage. Some damage himself, hops over towards the back of the dragon pit. Licorice is gonna find him. Someday. Oh man, that's not where you want to be, buddy. Blabber's coming in now. He's got the ulti to follow up. Now, before Party. they get there. Ryoma on to Niski. When the LeBlanc jumps you, it only does 20% of your HP. You're feeling pretty all right about it. Drake slain by 100 Thieves. Ocean Soul prevented. TP's coming in. Licorice into the middle of four. And that is a disastrous encounter for 100 Thieves. Stunt will be the second to fall. Ryoma's phone will join him. It's a two for zero. It's already got wow. 10 stacks, and I don't see them losing out on any kills. Niski has just had, honestly, an incredible series on this Zoe. Sven looking for the final Mystic shot to take down the enemy jungler. Blabber's coming in. He's got the Yumi right on top of him. There's the roots. There's the engage. There's the team fight. There's the potential counterattack, but not so fast. 
Here come the thundering hooves from behind, and the Hecarim arrive. It's Cody's son and someday heading for the hills as Misty jumps up the wall, and Vin is there to go unstoppable and bring down someday. Paddlestar won't find the mark, but Cody is forced to hobble back to the Nexus alone as everyone from Cloud9 barrels towards those turrets. Well, Question answered. That is why Cloud9 chose 100 Thieves in the first round of the playoffs. They will be victorious. Congratulations. A swift 3-0 for the number one seed coming into the playoffs. The longest game took 31 minutes. All those things made it, uh, you know, completely crush any fears people might have about a, a retread of the hundred, or excuse me, the, the Immortals that went 17 and 1. And I think we, and uh, we learned a good lesson here about Cloud9 that you can't really pinch Sven. Man. Yeah, the damage percent of the first game, kill participation, super high. That's, that's insane. It is. It is. I mean, you can you can tell by the lack of words coming out of my analyst's 19, mouth how oh, impressive uh, these these stats are uh, for that mid laner. Uh, but again, it, it's. Awake to my